we'll be kicking everything off with Norway, which I think is a really good country to start with because just about everybody has heard of this place, but there are plenty of things about it that aren't exactly common knowledge. There are more things to it than just fjords, northern lights, and black metal. For this video, we'll be taking a look at 50 random things that I thought were worth talking about. Norway shares a border with three countries as it goes even further east than Finland due to having a small sliver of land bordering Russia. The county that touches Russia is called Finnmark, being the largest yet least populated county since it's mostly a barren plateau, effectively blocking off Sweden or Finland from the Barents Sea to the north. As a matter of fact, Russia and Norway both share the Barents Sea, but its name comes from the Dutch explorer named Willem Barents. He was an expedition leader of the far north during the 16th century, setting out for a northeast passage to Asia. The Barents Sea is extremely rich in cod, and a lot of different species are contained within this area due to the different water masses. Warm Atlantic salt water, cold Arctic waters, and coastal fresh waters from Norway all meet within this region. Norway has the seventh longest coastline in the world, coming in at 53,199 kilometers, according to Wise Voter. 80% of the population is said to live within 10 kilometers of the coast. Svalbard is a Norwegian archipelago in the Arctic Ocean, which is home to Nielsen. Whoa, freeze right there for a sec. Just a quick disclaimer, I am probably going to butcher a lot of these words. Okay, continue. The northernmost populated area in the world. This was originally a coal mining region in the early 1900s. This town also marked the start of the first North Pole expeditions. Because of how common polar bears are, inhabitants will carry rifles around in regular day-to-day -day life. Reukan is a Norwegian town that, in the winter months, gets virtually no real sunlight, being completely shadowed thanks to the surrounding mountains. To combat this problem, giant mirrors were installed on the mountain walls in 2013. They're each 17 meters in area and are able to effectively reflect the light into the market square. This concept was thought up during the town's founding in 1913 by Sam Eide, but this vision wasn't attempted until reaching a time where technology could support it. A computer follows the sun's paths, bringing in the light, which allows it to come in at the perfect or ideal angle. Norway was occupied by Nazi Germany during the Second World War, starting on April 9, 1940. Despite declaring itself as neutral between the Allied and Axis powers, the strategy of this occupation was to give Germany control of ice-free harbors in the North Atlantic, ensuring extra security to the iron ore mines that came from Sweden. Allied powers did intervene, but lost to Hitler's Blitzkrieg by June of that year. King Haakon VII and the rest of the governing body escaped to England following the occupation, allowing for the fascist leader Vidkun Quisling to proclaim himself as the new prime minister. Concentration camps were set up, many Jews were deported, and he did remain in power until the Axis power surrendered in 1945. After surrendering to the Allies, Quisling was arrested for treason and executed later that year. Black metal, an extreme subgenre of heavy metal, focusing mostly on blast beats, tremolo picking, and shrieking vocals, takes a lot of its roots in the Norwegian scene. Heavy emphasis on Satanism outside of shock value became far more common with this particular style, utilizing coarse paint to distinguish themselves from bands of other genres. Speaking of black metal, the infamous church burnings and murders brought a whole new level of controversy to the genre. The most notable ones involved the Norwegian black metal projects Mayhem and Emperor, especially Mayhem, that one having the muddiest history in terms of the genre. Mayhem's former vocalist, Dead, shot himself in 1991, which was later used on an album cover art. In 1993, the band's bassist, Varg Vigernes, would murder his bandmate Euronymous, the guitarist, due to animosity between the two by stabbing them to death in his apartment. Vigernes is also known for his extreme right-wing politics and Nazism. His band Burzum formed around the same time, widely influencing the NSBM scene, or National Socialist Black Metal. Seeing how much of Norway is coastal, it makes sense that beaches become a popular destination here. Lofoten is an archipelago that has many, including Hawkland Beach. According to several publications, this one has been named the most beautiful in the country. White sand and clear waters in the Arctic region are the biggest draw, but its geographical location allows for a solid spot to see the sunrise and the sunset. The beginning of the Viking Age is said to have started in Norway somewhere around the year 793 AD when Norse people looted the monastery of Lindisfarne in England. These were known as seafarers, which dominated the Scandinavian areas roughly from the 8th to the 10th century. One of the most iconic artifacts from this era is the Osaberg ship built in 820 and excavated in 1904. It gets its name from being discovered in the Oseberg farm, and you can see it reconstructed and preserved in the Viking Ship Museum located in the country's capital, Oslo. Norway is sometimes called Moose Country, 
being known for all the wild moose in several of its forests. In the municipality of Stor Elvdal in eastern Norway, you can find one of the world's largest moose statues. This was built as a reminder to how many of them live in the area for the drivers. Considered a dependency of Norway, Bouve Island is the world's most remote island situated in the South Atlantic Ocean. It's a sub-Antarctic and volcanic island and not part of the Antarctic Treaty System, which is what allows Norway to own it as a dependency. The entire island is uninhabited, being a protected nature reserve. Vegetation is very limited due to its climate, however it has worked as a heavy breeding ground for certain bird species. From 1130 until 1240 AD, Norway went through what it was known as the Civil War period. Since 1123, the land was ruled by the king Sigurd the Crusader until one Harald Gill popped in from Ireland claiming to be the king's half-brother. Miraculously, the king recognized this, but forbade him from taking the throne as long as his son or himself were still alive. When the king died in 1130, Harald broke that promise, gained popular support, kicking off the War of the Impostors, which began this entire period. Stavanger and Kristiansand are two of the larger cities around Norway's southern coast, both connected by the E39 highway. Along this region you can find the Motor Center Norway, formerly known as K&A Raceway, Sokndal, that sits within the mountains. Aikidalsvama is a scenic spot along this range, mostly being a large body of water surrounded by the mountains. Near this, you might find yourself stumbling upon a rock formation known as Trollpikin, which literally translates to troll's dick. This is because a rock juts out resembling an erect penis. In 2017, this was severed from the use of power tools, but a fund was raised to reattach it using glue and cement. Moreover, the general area is surrounded by greenery and smaller mountains, as well as great views of the water. Now you can't talk about Norway without discussing the stave churches, which basically get their name from the vertical wood boards known as staves. Around 1180 AD, the Borgund stave church was built in honor of the Apostle Andrew, one of Norway's most distinctive of the stave churches. Due to the lack of daylight that can enter the building, it's usually very dark on the interior. It also contains Norway's only remaining freestanding bell stavework tower, and much of the medieval interior remains as it was, save for some restorations. Now this church in particular is known for all of its adorned non-Christian symbols, most notably the four outer dragon heads. In 1868, it was converted into a museum in place of a church, and a new church was constructed later that year close by for the purpose of actual worship. Another one of the famous stave churches is the Gol Stave Church, built around the same time and, like Borgund, was converted to a museum. Originally, when this one was to be replaced in 1880, it was to be demolished, but was saved due to the Society for the Preservation of Ancient Norwegian Monuments. What a mouthful. Only the parts from the Middle Ages wound up being preserved. A complete replica of this was built simply by adding new to the title. So one more that we'll take a look at is the Hedaral Save Church, considered to be the largest of the saved churches. This one is still in use, being a popular spot for people to get married today. Sitting on a foundation of stone, this large building is also strengthened by its interior staves for support. Thanks to its construction taking place after Christianity had heavily influenced Norway, it doesn't support as many pagan dragons as the others, but instead has a higher amount of Christian symbols. In the early 19th century, it actually served as an election church, part of a long string of other polling stations that would lead to the Norwegian Constituent Assembly and the writing of the Constitution of Norway, which was in 1814. Loosely based on traditional clothing, a bunad is a Norwegian article of clothing heavily taking roots in the 19th and early 20th centuries. These can commonly be seen worn in celebrations ranging from weddings to graduations to holidays all over the place to this day. Jostalsbrunn National Park lies in Vestland County, Norway, getting its name from the largest glacier on mainland Europe. It's also the largest white area that you will find on a map of Norway. Nearly half the park is made up of these glaciers, also known for the valleys and the waterfalls. The highest peak is 2,083 meters above sea level, although it is shrinking every year, which is starting to reveal farm ruins that were overtaken by the glacier in the 18th century. Speaking of the early 18th century, much of modern-day Norway was part of the Swedish Empire. Tensions here arose around this time period specifically due to the young Charles XII taking power. Peter the Great's Tsarist Russia would team up with Frederick IV of Denmark-Norway and Augustus II of the strong Saxony-Poland-Lithuania. Ooh, another mouthful. Charles would see a defeat by 1709 known as the Battle of Poltava, the war's largest battle. Now, this is heavily seen as one of the most important wars of the northern European regions, as it ended the Swedish Empire's massive power presence. 
By 1721, the Swedish Empire would no longer be ruled by an absolute monarch. However, Norway never saw actual independence until 1905, nearly 200 years later. So to understand Norway's separation from Sweden, we actually have to look back at the Union of Norway and Sweden that dates to 1814, when Norway's constitution was written. Despite having their own constitution, Norway was still ruled by the same monarchy and followed the same foreign policy as Sweden. This latter part is really important because of the fact that both nations had different interests in terms of trading partners, and Norway was actually more dependent on foreign trade in general, especially with the United Kingdom. As they approached the 20th century, more military expenditure existed on both fronts, and in 1905, Norway's Christian Michelson formed a coalition, passing a law in the Norwegian parliament to dissolve the Union. A referendum was held with an almost entirely unanimous vote to confirm the Union dissolution. Despite no country legally being able to technically do this, Norway does claim a region in Antarctica known as Maudland. This region covers about a sixth of the continent's land. The first person to successfully reach the South Pole was a Norwegian known by the name of Roald Amundsen, who joined an expedition via a Belgian ship called Belgicia in 1899. He beat Robert Scott, another expeditioner, thanks to the help of his dogs to get him there quicker. Now, let's talk about the capital. So, Oslo was founded way back in 1049 when it was designated a Kopstad, or a place of trade. To protect the city against invasion from Sweden in the 13th century, the Akafrusus fortress began construction. In the past, it had been used as a military base and even as a prison, also temporarily an office for the prime minister. Though it has never been taken over by a foreign enemy, it was surrendered to Nazi Germany where people were executed by the occupiers. Today the fortress is open to the public between 6 a.m. and 9 p.m. daily. Another really famous fortress is the Buhis Fortress, also lying along the border with Sweden along the Gotha River. This medieval castle was built entirely out of granite and brick. This also served defense purposes, with a continuous wall that surrounds the base roughly three meters thick. Included on the inside of this exterior wall structure, you will find the King's Hall, a chapel, barracks, and many other things. During the Northern Seven Years' War, the fortress was severely damaged. A massive explosion was caused in the Red Tower, known as the Bohas Bang, to thwart a Swedish attack. It would be rebuilt, but demolished again in the 18th century. However, much of it is still intact to this day, as money for this project ran out. Now, what was the Northern Seven Years' War? It was also known as the Nordic Seven Years' War, which was basically a war that started in 1563 that would see the end of what is known as the Kalmar Union, and that was a union between Sweden, Norway, and Denmark. This was heavily sparked due to frustrations from the domination of Denmark over the others, as well as the colonies of Iceland and Greenland. A stalemate led to a treaty known as the Treaty of Stettin in 1570, effectively ending the war. So, as I mentioned at the top of the video, Norway is very much known for its fjords, which are basically giant, deep, and narrow bastions of water that extend deep into the land itself. These take formation from glaciers that melted from the time of the Ice Age, which alter the landscape as they move over time. One very famous one is the Gairunge Fjord, and the largest mountain in the area, Akerneset, will eventually erode into this fjord. This will cause a tsunami large enough to devastate all the surrounding towns, so uh, hope you aren't there to see it. Despite trying to remain a neutral country after World War II, Norway joined and actually helped found NATO in 1949. After World War II, the idea of complete neutrality showed little hope, so there was an idea to create a Nordic pact with nearby Denmark and Sweden. This, however, was never agreed upon. In 1948, a Finno-Soviet friendship treaty was signed, which caused pressure on Norway to join the alliance. They would become the only NATO country to border the Soviet Union until the inclusion of Turkey. The longest river in Norway is the Glomma River, running about 621 kilometers. It also includes the Vorma River tributary. Due to its geographical placement through rich forest districts, it was used for log floating all throughout history. Nowadays, it works as a major power source for hydroelectric plants. There's an amusement park in Norway near Svinsund called Klatrig pa Grensen, or in English, climbing on the border. As you may have guessed, it's a park that focuses on climbing, including zip lines, trails, climbing nets, bungee trampolines, and ground activities like paintballing and tractor pedaling. Speaking of the border, due to its long history of being part of bigger empires, the Norwegian border shared with Sweden has changed several times. Modern borders mostly follow a drainage divide that runs through the Scandinavian mountains and rivers that flow into the Norwegian Sea. Because Norway isn't part of the EU, there are some border custom stations such as the bridge on Svinesund that follows the E6 road connecting both countries. 
Orge is another small municipality near the border that is home to the Halden Canalen Regional Park. Named after the Halden Canal, it was established in 2012 and gives a clear view of the town situated right along it. Halden is also one of the only cities mentioned in Norway's national anthem. So inside Norway's capital, you will find something known as Old Town Oslo, which is basically an inner part of it that remains the oldest urban area, if the name didn't give that away. Many ruins from the city established over a millennium ago are found in the form of stones and bricks, such as the ruins of St. Mary's Church. Today, Oslo's bishop resides on the remains of St. Olav's monastery, currently functioning as a cellar. Much of the cuisine in Norway revolves around lamb, potatoes, and of course, fish because of the heavy coast, but the national dish in Norway is mutton stew. Ford the coral is a very common version of this, which basically mixes it with cabbage and there's actually a holiday around it. This falls on the last Thursday of September. So many, when they think of tacos, they're gonna think of Mexico, right? They've been a common treat in Norway ever since the 1990s, specifically on Friday nights. For the most part, these constitute of any meat of your choice with white cheese and a variety of vegetables. The common choices are what kind of set them apart from the Mexican tacos, mostly consisting of onions, corn, cucumbers, and uh, mushrooms. Edvard Munch was a very famous painter from Norway, and you might recognize the name as the artist behind The Scream. He was painted in 1893 to represent anxiety, something that just about anybody can relate to. This is also what inspired the concept of Ghostface from The Scream franchise. Edvard grew up with many deep-seated issues and fears, starting when his mother passed away only a few years after his birth. Years of repressed feelings and emotions show heavily in his artistic style, which were co-opted by inspiration from the Impressionist painters after visiting Paris. Other feelings of love, death, terror, and abandonment come through in many of his paintings, such as The Vampire and The Dance of Life. Munch would die in 1944. Today you can visit the Munch Museum of Art thanks to all of his work being donated to the government rather than being held by one private family. Morten Tildum is a very famous Norwegian film director, famous domestically for his film Headhunter, which came out in 2011, and internationally for The Imitation Game that hit the scenes in 2014. In their final spring semester, many high schoolers in Norway will take part in what is called Rus. This is basically a several week long string of partying and drinking that precedes the final exams that are taken before graduation, and it always runs until Constitution Day on May 17th to participate in the parades. For a country that gets so much snowfall, it's not really any kind of surprise that skiing is a normal activity. But some people like to take that a step further. They will basically go skiing when there isn't any snow at all. How is this possible? Well, in the middle of summer, you might find someone doing this on a slope with roller skis. Easter in Norway is actually a really big deal, and what I find extra interesting is how people go about celebrating it. For one, crime fiction is consumed by many, whether it be a TV show, or a book, or a graphic novel, or whatever. In fact, shows of this sort are all over TV on Easter and they're almost unavoidable. In terms of following Christianity, different sources will give you different numbers, but anywhere from 65 to 85% of the population is part of the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Norway. Much of this is in a cultural sense, however, as there isn't a large number of people actively participating. Viking legends and Norwegian folklore tend to focus on elves and trolls, which directly inspired Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. You can see the Northern Lights most easily from late September to early March, depending on where in the country you are. These occur from electronically charged sun particles from a sunstorm colliding with Earth's atmosphere. Clearer nights are going to offer better experience, especially somewhere that doesn't have a lot of light pollution. Kyrag is a mountain located on the bottom tip of Norway along the shore of Lysiafjord. This mountain specifically is known for Siraya Bolten, translating to Kyrag Boulder. This is basically a five meter boulder that's stuck between a crevice on the mountain. You can access this and land on it without equipment, however there is a massive drop below, so tread lightly. Even though Eric the Red settled in Iceland and eventually Greenland, he was born in Norway. His real name was Erik Torvaldsson, and he and his father would eventually be banished to Iceland as punishment for manslaughter. Bergen is the second largest city in Norway, following Oslo, and here you can find Bregen Harbor. The wooden buildings along the dock have been a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1979, being one of Europe's oldest ports that was established as a trade center in the 12th century. The wood style with gabled facades is preserved well, meant to reflect the traditional style with everything facing the harbor, and the appearance stems back from rebuilding after the fires in 1702. The Sami people are an indigenous group that occupy much of the northern section of Norway, as well as Sweden, Finland, and a little bit of Russia on the Kola Peninsula. Sapmi is the name of this region which actually has its own flag. They are a semi-nomadic people group that are known for trapping fur, herding sheep, and of course, fishing. 
The Lardell Tunnel is the longest road tunnel in the entire world and can be found in Vestland County in Norway, allowing the E16 road to completely connect Bergen and Oslo. It's roughly 24 and a half kilometers long, meant to cut through the mountain. Because of its length, it's divided into four sections, split by three mountain caves which use blue and yellow lights. Signs mark how far into the tunnel the driver is, and the caves can also work as turnaround points as it takes roughly 20 minutes to get through the entire tunnel. Oh, yeah, and there are no emergency exits. The Surisniva Igloo Hotel can be found in Alta, a town in Norway named after the river. The entire structure is made out of snow and ice with leather sleeping pads and warm sleeping bags as the temperature is kept between negative 4 and 7 degrees Celsius. There is a service building next door that includes the showers and storage areas and two on-site restaurants. There are also ice sculptures everywhere. About 30% of the world's puffin population resides in Norway and are usually found by the sea. And with that, we've got our 50 facts about Norway. If you made it this far, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for sticking with me. If you like this, please give the video a like. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. If I pronounced any of these words wrong and you know Norwegian or are Norwegian, feel free to correct me. Is there anything that I got wrong? Is there anything that you think should have been mentioned that wasn't? If so, I'd love to hear about either of them in the comments. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you, and I will see you next time. Started. I'd like to give a shout out to the channels that inspired me to start this one. Geography Now, Johnny Harris, Real Life Lore, Bald and Bankrupt, History Scope, Yes Theory, The Great War, Balkan Odyssey, DPRK Explained, Bad Empanada, Hakim, Ugopnik, and Second Thought. Thank you all.